Our top story this Tuesday, subtropical depression Alberto still carries the threat of heavy rains as it reaches up through the south and toward the lower Midwest. The storm made landfall late Monday afternoon in Laguna Beach on the Florida Panhandle. It's the first named storm of the hurricane season, which officially gets underway on Friday. Former captive Joshua Holt returned to his home state of Utah Monday night to a cheering crowd of family and friends. Holt and his Venezuelan wife were held in a Caracas jail for almost two years for what the United States calls bogus charges of stockpiling weapons. And 8,000 Starbucks restaurants around the country will be closing this afternoon for training purposes. Employees will undergo anti-bias instruction. The decision came after two black men were arrested for sitting in a Starbucks in Philadelphia. CBS's Laura Podesta reports on what will be discussed in today's sessions. 8,000 Starbucks are closing this afternoon starting after 2 p.m. so that workers can receive racial bias training. The decision comes after this situation last month when two black men meeting in a Philadelphia Starbucks were asked to leave and then arrested by police minutes later. What did they get called for? Because there are two black guys sitting here meeting me? Yes. The coffee chain's leaders publicly apologized and reached out to activists and experts in bias training to put together today's curriculum. This is not going to be a one day event where we're going to do something and leave. We're going to stay with this. Starbucks says each store will receive a toolkit using video and discussion. The first training will focus on understanding racial bias and the history of public accommodations in the United States. Experts say working as a group can mitigate bias. Uh, if we have a serious doubt about a customer, then ask three people's perspective on what I should do before taking a serious action like calling the police. While company operated stores will close today, licensed stores like those in hotels or airports are expected to remain open. Laura Podesta, CBS News, New York. Starbucks is sharing its training content, content with its licensed business partners, so they have the option to make it available to their employees at a later date. Turning to flood watch, a flood warning remains in effect for the Clarks Fork and Yellowstone Rivers. Authorities are asking residents and onlookers to please stay away from the dangerous water's edge. As of this morning, the Yellowstone River is measuring 13 feet 6 inches. That's a much more manageable number than the 16 feet they were preparing for over the weekend. But just because it's better than it could have been does not mean this isn't a serious event. You know, even if the water went down today, this is a top 10 historic crest on both the Yellowstone and the Clark's Fork of the Yellowstone River. So this, you know, even though we're talking a, a reduction in the threat, this was a significant event for the county. And we just want to say thank you to all the agencies that assisted. Billings National Weather Service says the Yellowstone will likely hit its highest point early Wednesday morning. As for the Clark's Fork of the Yellowstone, it is expected to reach record flood stage in Carbon and Yellowstone counties. This morning it has reached its expected crest of nine and a half feet. The previous record is nine feet three inches. Carbon County authorities, lawmakers and disaster and emergency services experts met in Fromberg Monday night because the Clark's Fork drainage snowpack is at 120. 24 percent. The town of Fromberg is of primary concern as quite a bit of, of the town is within the projected floodplain. There are sandbags on pallets at the Fromberg Fire Hall ready to move out to wherever needed. Authorities have also set evacuation plans for everything east of 3rd Street if the river rises to a predetermined point. Other areas of concern are the sewage lagoons and water intakes in Fromberg, Belfry, Bridger and Edgar. If evacuations become necessary in Fromberg, the high school gym will be a point of refuge. Back here in Billings, a 21-year-old woman is behind bars this morning after she struck a pedestrian with her car and drove off. It happened this morning just before 1.30 on 8th Street West near Alderson Avenue. A 20-year-old man was walking with a woman when he was struck by an older model Ford Mustang. The car fled but was later stopped by an MSU police officer. The driver was taken into custody and charges are pending. Sergeant Pat Curry with the Billings Police Department says speed and alcohol were factors in the crash. The male victim is in the hospital with serious head injuries. The name of the suspect has not been released.
Continuing our coverage, we now know the name of the man who lost his life this weekend while kayaking Rock Creek in Carbon County. 66-year-old Edward Conning of Cody, Wyoming, was kayaking about 10 miles south of Red Lodge on Sunday when the kayak overturned. Conning was stuck underneath it for more than 10 minutes, and that's when authorities believe he drowned. On the campaign trail in just one week, Montana voters go to the polls for the 2018 primary election. MTN's chief political reporter Mike Dennison brings us an update on what the landscape looks like as campaigns enter the home stretch. Two major statewide contests are topping Montana's primary election ballot, but it is a primary, so we can only vote in one of them. I'm talking about the four-way Republican primary to choose a GOP opponent for Democratic Senator John Tester and the five-way Democratic primary to select that party's challenger to first-term Republican Congressman Greg Gianforte. The big money contest is the Senate Republican primary, featuring Big Sky businessman Troy Downing, former State District Judge Russ Fagg of Billings, State Senator Al Oshevsky of Kalispell, and State Auditor Matt Rosendale. The candidates have raised and spent about $4 million dollars, but another $2.7 million has been spent by outside groups trying to influence the outcome. Almost all of that has come from conservative groups supporting Rosendale, the likely frontrunner. But in a four-way primary, the outcome is far from certain. The same goes for the Democratic House primary, where there are actually six candidates on the ballot. But former State Senator Linda Moss of Billings has suspended her campaign. That leaves Billings attorney John Heenan, former Land Trust Director Grant Keir of Missoula, Bozeman attorneys John Meyer and Jared Petinato, and former state lawmaker Kathleen Williams, also a Bozeman. Heenan, Keir, and Williams are the best funded candidates and are likely to fight it out for the nomination. And let's not forget the Green Party. It has its own contested primary for the U.S. Senate between Steve Kelly and Tim Adams, both from Bozeman. But if you choose the Green Party ballot to decide this contest, you can't vote in any Democratic or Republican Party primary. One party ballot is all you get. Of course, these aren't the only contested races on the primary ballot. Voters will decide scores of legislative primaries and races for local office, such as sheriff. There is a four-way Republican primary for the Public Service Commission seat in northern Montana and a three-way Democratic primary for the PSC seat that includes Kalispell and Helena. We also could be looking at an above-average turnout. Voters go to the polls a week from Tuesday on June 5th. But as of this weekend, more than 110,000 Montanans had already voted with absentee ballots. Thousands more will do the same this week. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. And Mike reminds us voters can also register right up until and on Election Day. Now we go to Bozeman, where 100 alpacas, a few llamas, and close to 800 pounds of wool. That was the agenda for Alpacas of Montana Monday on their annual shearing day. The farm uses a shearing company based in Ohio that visits the farm one day every year to shear the animals from sunup until sundown. One of the most daunting shears of the day was a rescued llama named Holly, who owner James Budd estimates has not been sheared in more than 10 years. And just as shedding all of that wool feels good for the animals, it feels good for the owners as well. Today is our annual shearing day. We get very excited about it, mostly because after last winter was just horrendous on all of us. So it's just a sign of summer is finally here. And while alpacas of Montana will get close to eight pounds of wool per animal, they use close to 300,000 pounds a year for their textiles. Before we take a break, authorities are warning that Russian hackers have infected a device that brings the Internet to our homes and offices. But CBS's John Shumo tells us there an, there's an easy way to protect yourself from this cyber threat. So we're in your guest room. Yes. You keep your router. Like millions of Americans, Alyssa Domnitz has a router, the unit that brings internet service to the devices in her home. Routers come in all shapes and sizes, but the government says hundreds of thousands have been infected with malware. Now I'm kind of freaking a little bit. You made me really worried, John. The FBI recently put out a public service announcement saying the malware is able to perform multiple functions, including possible information collection, device exploitation, and blocking network traffic. They can spy on you. Ed Straws is the former head of New York City's FBI computer crime squad. He says the infection could give hackers access to personal information or even allow them to disable the router. They can even wipe it out 
or cause it not to work any longer. The FBI has already identified how the hackers got into the routers. Now the agency is asking everyone to do a reboot. So by turning it off and on, it resets in a way that allows the FBI to identify the devices that were infected. Alyssa rebooted hers by unplugging it for five seconds. Hopefully that'll do the job. The reboot should also destroy part of the malware. Experts say you also need to create a new strong password for your router. John Schumo, CBS News, New York. And you should also make sure your router has the latest software or firmware installed.